Um, dear viewers, you are welcome to another segment of Daybreak Africa. Of course, yes, we are with a comrade, a woman like a man, a woman, rather a man in woman's nature, in person of comrade, a lean. Uh, Omo Omo Odofi. Odofi. She is the chairman of uh, TUC in Ondo State. Today, Mommy, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, today, we shall be discussing on this uh, issue of fuel subsidy removal. Nigerians are really waiting to hear from uh, TUC. To hear, to hear from NLC, the trade union movement, what are you going to do? Then, this increment coming ahead very soon, like it has been stipulated by the GMD of NIPC. That is why we are here today. We want to hear from the comrade. Ma, what is the full meaning of TUC? It's Trade Union Congress. Trade Union. The State Council. Trade Union Congress on the State Council. Yes. Which you are the chairman. Yes. Okay, good. Um, God's grace. Of course, uh, it is a known thing to everybody in Nigeria that uh, NIPC said and the federal government said that we should be expecting increment in the oil, most especially the petrol, and that there's going to be this uh, subsidy removal. What can you say to this subsidy removal? Yes, thank you very much. It is quite unfortunate that uh, the only method the federal government can adopt to curtail corruption in the oil sector is through removal of subsidy, hmm. which cannot go away. Hmm. In fact, I want to tell you that uh, in this country, there is hunger in the land. Hmm. So many Nigerians are suffering. In fact, this government, they have turned Nigeria to beggars and uh, we have witnessed so many so, so many challenges especially the issue of uh, COVID-19 which have, has already put us back in respect of economy I don't think removal of subsidy totally is the solution because it's the masses that will suffer the masses are the receiving hand and presently they are not even they are not okay for an average Nigerian to get even to scare me is very, very difficult. You see so many of them in the street begging for money, begging for food, which was very unlike Nigerian before. We see people begging, maybe those people who came from a neighboring country, like maybe Rwanda, when they, there, was a, there was a inflation in that country. But Nigeria, we don't beg for bread. And every Nigerian is proud to say, I won't, I won't beg for bread. But now, the situation is, uh, is different because there is hunger in the land. There is scarcity and there is inflation. And I don't think remove, removing subsidy at this time, this period, is the best solution. And I still you see the Union Congress at the National, we are moving to oppose it. We are not, going, we are not favorably disposed to it because we know that uh, Nigerians will suffer. Even the workforce will suffer. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma. Um, but, Ma, don't forget again that the uh, federal government, the moment they made that pronouncement, they said there's going to be a solution to it. And what is that solution? They said every Nigeria, at least 40 million Nigeria, we get for 5,000 Naira each. So, I think that 5,000, don't you think it will alleviate the sovereign? Well, it cannot. Even going to the going to look at the figure dimension, forty million. For, for we, the, the masses in the in the in the country, they are more than forty million, compared with the total uh, total population of the country. And moreover, the five thousand can cannot go anywhere to solve the problem of the masses. And even even the distribution problem will arise mm. because even the money may not even get to the the people that has been targeted. So I don't think that 5,000 can push the effect of a subsidy remover. It will be an additional problem. What I just want to advise the government is that uh, 
they should not think that uh, removing subsidy is the only way to curb corruption in the oil sector. They can still look inward to see another method they can use. Because this their method will affect the masses greatly. We are the, the masses are the receiving end and it will not all go well. Thank you. Um, okay, again, let's look at it this way. When we talk about federal government, we talk about Nigerian ruling Nigeria. Yes. Our leaders are from this country. They feel the impact, the impulse of what Nigerians are facing. So, don't you think if that uh, remover, if they do the remover, are you not looking at it from the economic angle that is going to make our economy buoyant? Well, the, the disadvantages is more than the advantages. Yes. Mm. Because do no removal of subsidy, it will affect all facets of uh, economy. There, there, there is already inflation in the land already. Mm. But removing the subsidy again, meaning that uh, the, 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 the pump price of petrol will increase. Even they are suggesting 340 naira mm. per liter. What of the transport section? What of, even for an average Nigerian, or even in masses, taking taxi from one point to the other? They don't think of it. What of even uh, taking food from the community to the, the to the city, for the villages to the city. All this will be affected. The food food will be very costly. There will be inflation. Even already there is inflation, and the remove of something will also trigger up the inflation again, which will will make the masses to experience more hardship in the land. And I want to advise the federal government that. Uh, the removal of subsidies is not the only solution they can they can take to curb if, uh, corruption in the oil sector. They can still see another means to curb corruption in the oil sector. They should look for another method because this will really affect the masses greatly, and it's not going to go away. Okay, um, okay ma. Uh, we are talking about petroleum here and there. Petro here and there, increment, removing this, removing that. But already we all know that there is increment on gas. Now I think in some places, in some states, it is 600, in some places it is 700, in some places it is 800. And people are managing it like that. Likewise, kerosene, the same thing applicable. Why are we so particular about petrol? Thank you very much. All what we have mentioned, the gas, the kerosene, even the common man cannot afford it. That's why the fact that uh, well, there is no subsidy on that, they cannot afford it. The petrol, I, I want to believe that uh, the problem, the challenge they are facing at the whole sector, that made them to feel that uh, if they remove subsidy, maybe those who are Bunkery, those who are exporting, you will be able to cop them. But I want to believe that uh, the petrol spread across every facet of things. Mm. You use it even to get light in the house. There's no, there's no uh, uh, regular supply of uh, electricity mm. by NEPA. Or maybe I don't know the, the name they are being called now. And it is petrol you will use to power your to do many, so many things. Even at the business sector, some, some of these uh, local petty traders, like Babin, Salon, all those things, they use petrol. Even to grant ordinary paper, you use petrol. So many things that petrol is being used for. And uh, I, I want to say that uh, the movie subsidy totally is, is, is going to affect so many things in this country. It will it's going to put us backward again. Hmm. We have been experiencing inflation now. And when the, 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 the subsidy is being removed totally, before you know, so many things, so many bad things, so many atrocities, so many insecurity, hmm. insecurity challenges we will experience again. Personally, we are experiencing insecurity challenges, but it will aggravate it the more. That is how it will be. Okay, ma. Uh, let's look at it again from this angle. 
Uh, of course, there is this uh, common saying from a school of thought that uh, to be for beforehand. To be for one. It's to be for one. Or to be for one is to be for one. Now, we've been told by the people in charge that there may likely be increment or removal of that subsidy. And the moment they remove the subsidy, there will be increment definitely. If it happens, then what will the trade union congress do? What do you think the NLC will do? Will they give hope to Nigerians that definitely will fight it back to the normal price? Well, presently, they are proposing. They are just making a pronunciation. Yes, announcement. But I want to tell you, trade union movement, we are going to oppose it. Hmm. We are not going to accept it because of the masses of this country. We are going to advise the federal government to look inward. We are solving these uh, petroleum challenges. We are not going to accept it. And we have been making moves that uh, we are not going to accept. The Trade Union Congress, on those state council, at the national, the NSC, at the national, we are going to oppose it. Hmm. We are going to oppose it. Boss, yes. uh, let, me, let me take you back a little. Before now, TUC, NLC, and uh, GNC, they've been fighting collectively yes. to make sure that uh, Nigerians are okay, most especially on the policies of the government. And it seems, or let me say from the time in memorial, at the end of the day, the policy will still come to stay. Don't you think this one will also be safe? Well, we... We will collaborate together to make sure that uh, this one will not come to stay. Some of the ones that has come to say, not that we didn't go against it, but there, there is a way the federal government will tell us that uh, there will be palliative, that they will question effect. And we now discover that uh, even the palliative and the questioning of effect does not work. Mm. It doesn't work. It doesn't really question the effect of Nigerians. Mm. So that's why we are and they are pronouncing this now. We will advise them appropriately hmm. that uh, you should not go away. That they have, they have to look inward. A better way, better method in which they can deal with the whole setup. Okay. Uh, okay. Just before we we'll wrap it up, we we'll wrap it up. I want to believe that uh, the Ondo State chapter of uh, TUC, uh, they've been trying anyway. Yes. They've been doing their best. Let's quickly come to look at it from the state angle. The state government have been paying percentage salary for the past almost a year plus now. They've been paying percentage salary and the workers have been complaining bitterly. If I had to pay fees, to pay school fees, to pay bills, these have become a serious problem on the part of the civil servant. What is the TUC doing? What is the NLC doing? Well, you have asked a big question. And I want to say that, not that TUC kept quiet. You know that uh, this uh, advent of this COVID-19 has done a lot of havoc to the state economy resources, even in the country. And even this has affected the allocation that is coming from the federal government vis-a-vis the state. So we, 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 we discovered that uh, there's no enough fund. There's no enough, enough fund to pay salary. That's why the issue of percentage payment. And thank God now, we are happy that uh, there is bail out that the federal government want to do out to all the 36 states in the country. With this, it is for the problem of a uh, percentage payment. And then we put, an end will be put to it, I believe. All right. Um, let me just quote you from what you've just said when we were talking about the issue of this uh, subsidy removal. You made mention of the fact that, okay, that the federal government should look inward and find a lasting solution rather than removing the subsidy so as not to cause more havoc to the common man uh, in the country. Now again, back to the states, which is on those states. You as a comrade, a leader of a trade union congress, what would be your advice to the government 
or will you be of the support that there should be uh, there should be adjustment in the workforce of all those states? Maybe the governor can try to reduce the number of workforce so as you know for the government to concentrate and to pay salary as a two engine. Thank will you. Of, will you be of support? Thank you very much. The, uh, reducing the workforce is not the solution. For somebody who has worked for maybe 20, 15, 20, 30 years, even if you said that you should go home, you will still continue to receive pension. So it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And even our government, our maybe government, the government of Undo State, Arakun, Uluaru Timi, Odunayo, Akiridulu, it's not even working, it's not even taking in, in that direction. It's not working towards that direction. He believed that uh, with time, things will improve and uh, he will embark on regular payment of salary. Because the first, year, the first four years in office, he paid salary as at when due. So because of the economic challenges that we are facing, even the, the, even the federal government too, and the, the reduction in the, in, the, in the allocation that is coming from the, from the federal government that made it to be impossible to pay full salary. But I know a need is coming to it very soon. All those state workers will smile again. Very soon, yes. all those state workers will, will smile, smile again. again. Yeah, it's good having you on board, man. Um, we really appreciate you. But just before we'll be uh, selling out, what will be your advice? to the federal government on the issue of subsidy, remember? What will be your advice to the government of Ondo State in the area of prompt salary payment? Thank you very much. I want to advise the federal government that they should look inward. They should look inward in the way of solving problem in the oil sector. I want to tell the federal government this corruption that has made us to be in this level, yes that uh, they should not see subsidy removal as a total solution. Because they should think of the masses that will be majorly affected. Those who will take cars, those who will use petrol for so many things, so that there won't be too much hunger in the land. There is hunger in the land already, that there won't be too much hunger in the land. And I want to advise the under state government that we're trying and uh, if the bailout is being released in tranches, I want to advise them they should concentrate on the payment of salary. Because the, even the government of Undo State, the government of Arakuni, Uluaruti, Modua, Yakiridu, is doing so many developmental projects. As I used to say in salary meetings, I told, I told them that despite all developmental projects that the, the government is doing, if you are not paying salary as at when do, it will be a minus. Salary, no payment of salary will rubbish every good things the government must have put in place. And they agree with me. And I know very soon the, the situation will change and it will shift for better. Our caring governor is, is, is even is working assiduously towards changing this situation. That is going back to regular payment of salary in full, not in percentage. Hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, well, for the benefit of those that are just joining us, um, I would like you now to tell them whom we've been speaking with all the while. I'm Comrade Helen Omoumi Odofi, the two UC chairman for the state, Undo State Council. Thank you so much, yes. We've been talking with uh, the comrade from uh, Ondo State, in person of uh, Comrade Omoumi Elaine Odofi. Odofi. She's the uh, TUC chairman in Ondo State. Dear viewers, we believe you've really enjoyed uh, watching our program for today. To we'll be back again tomorrow, it's been Temeto Piyadideji speaking with you and telling you that Nigeria will be good and it will be better. Thank you and God bless.